I'm a registered nurse. I'm on the board of the People's Harm Reduction Alliance, which is a peer-run syringe access program based here in Seattle. I'm also on the board of the National Perinatal Association. Uh, perinatology is around childbirth, so pregnancy, childbirth, breastfeeding, beyond all that. Um, through NPA, National Perinatal Association, I'm working on the uh, perinatal substance use work group. So we're trying to devise, uh, devise a guideline document that will address everything anybody needs taking care of someone or being someone who uses drugs during pregnancy and parenting from preconception all the way through you know, toddlerhood and beyond. Thank you, Joelle. Another thing about normalization, as far as particularly parenting, is that there is there is no good evidence of any harms of cannabis use during pregnancy or breastfeeding. There is none. So part of normalization is being led by the scientific evidence instead of making up your mind first and then trying to bend the evidence to fit that, which is what our scientists and our leaders in the American Academy of Pediatrics and the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists are doing, and they are wrong, and it's hurting people. Um, when you advocate for cannabis, you put your family in the line of fire. If you're an activist who doesn't have children or a house to lose or a car to drive, you still have your freedom to lose, which is significant, and I understand that. But when you become a parent, they hurt you where you will hurt the most, and those are your children. I'm just going to add real quick that at least when I think about normalization, when I hear it, I want to know more about the person who's talking about what needs to be normalized, because it means that there's something that's abnormal on the other side, at least from the person of color perspective. There needs to be some conversation about what normal means and who's saying it and what their point of view is on it because that might be different for me depending on the culture that I'm from or my relationship with cannabis or marijuana, whatever you choose to call it. I mean, I think that I just, I mean, there are a lot of things that I agree with that are said here, but at least in my conversations with other people of color in the industry, or even not in the industry, are we not normal? Because when I look at cannabis media, when I look at some of the social events that happen, like I don't see myself represented, but there's constantly those same people who are saying, we're normalizing, we're normalizing, we're normal. Well, who are you normalizing it for? Yes. Because it's not being normalized. So that's something that needs to be talked about. I think even before at the policy, before the policy level, just having conversations, and again, I mean, I'm speaking from my perspective again, trying to advocate for more people of color in the industry, more spaces, whether you're in the industry or not, to just celebrate being, having a relationship with weed in the first place. And what I found is, I'm a journalist, I ask tough questions, and what happens when I ask those tough questions and make people have conversations that yes, relate to race, and yes, it's uncomfortable, and yes, it's awkward, and nobody wants to be accused of being a racist. It's not about that. It's just about saying that there's a tough conversation that we need to have. We're not having it, and so before we can even start talking about changing policy, if we're gonna make new policy, who are we making it for? How are we making it inclusive? This buzzword equitable is all around Portland. Everybody's talking about it, but I'm like, let's actually put some action behind it instead of just words and, again, empty conversation. So I think when I'm, I'm thinking about normalizing, I'm thinking about the tough conversations that we need to have that we're not having and those tough conversations that I'm trying to initiate, but they get me called anti-white or a race baiter or all these things. And it's like, I'm, you know, I'm not any of those things. And I think anybody who knows me knows that but I can't have these conversations alone. And if people want to claim to be allies, well then you're gonna to have to stick around for the tough conversations and maybe you might hear something you don't like, but it has to happen in order to get to the place where we can create policy that is inclusive and is serving people who have traditionally been underserved by policies that are allegedly are supposed to be for everyone. Just want fairness. Yeah. And I think it's really important to remember too that People don't give up power. You have to take it from them. So I think policy is really important, but that's not just gonna change until people on the ground demand it. And so whatever sphere you're in, you have power and you use your power. And you have to put yourself on the line sometimes. I, I've lost jobs because I was advocating for my patients who used cannabis. You have to sacrifice something. Every single one of us does because if we don't, put our bodies on the line, nobody up there is going to do shit for us. Yeah. The thing about cannabis is that 
everybody uses it, all kinds of people, and we, we don't see everybody. The other thing about cannabis is that people that use cannabis are people that use heroin, and people that use cannabis are people that drink alcohol. And when we kind of silo ourselves into cannabis only, then we lose a huge part of our, our, our talent and our people and our community. And so I think it's really important not just to try to find those intersections with things that we like and things that are sexy and things that are gonna work for us. We need to join together with everybody in our community, regardless of whether you know they are more or less stigmatized than people who use cannabis, because we're all the same people. And about the, man, the kid stuff. Too much, too many, it's too much, yeah. It's I, I, I'm getting emotional right now because I've had to participate in those. I've had to tell people they can't be with their baby. I've had to, I've had to take somebody's fresh pump breast milk and dump it down the drain while she gives her baby a bottle. It is, it is heartbreaking and and it happens all the time and it happens in legal states too you guys the thing about parents and women and it's it's uh it's poor people and it's people of color and it's young people and it's unmarried people and um you know, those are the people in our society that don't have power, and that's why we're not talking about them, and that's why their lives are getting torn apart, and nobody's doing anything. Okay, um, so you guys have talked about um, cannabis and mothering, and I didn't expect for this to come to my doorstep. <laughs> and I've done a lot of activism, and I've stood up to a lot of people, and it really scares me that six weeks from now, I may be facing this. I'm sorry to get emotional, but be it's sorry, really so. personal, you know. And I made the choice early on not to hide it, not to hide my cannabis use. I'm tired of hiding. And I feel like if people talk about it and they speak up, like that's the start. You know, we all have to sacrifice something, like you said. And so I've chosen to be honest and transparent about my cannabis therapy and my patient needs as a pregnant woman, but I'm really scared of what's gonna happen in six weeks, so I'm wondering, from all of your perspective, like, what can I do now to prepare for if anything does happen? Bless you. Don't apologize for being emotional. Emotions are not weak, they're what makes us strong. Um, Oh, Montana. So um, we were talking a little bit about this before. Um, it It is possible that, it's possible probably not, they won't probably take your baby away, but it is very probable that they will forbid you from breastfeeding. Um, breastfeeding is a basic human right. You, uh, you can challenge that, but the, the problem with that is the hospital can put your baby on a 72 hour hold without any evidence whatsoever. Um, so it's it's a really, really big sacrifice for people to, to decide whether to fight back against these things because uh, you don't have any power as a patient. Um, so what I was suggesting earlier is um, get your own breast pump because they may not even give you a breast pump. Get your own breast milk storage stuff and buy some donor milk. You can get it from a milk bank online. It is very expensive. But if you want to avoid having your baby uh, given formula, then that might be something that you have to do. Uh, and I, I would say also consult with a lawyer. Um, National Advocates for Pregnant Women, advocatesforpregnantwomen.org. Uh, they provide pro bono legal services to women who are uh, pregnant and parenting and dealing with some of this stuff. There's also the Family Law and Cannabis Alliance. I believe they're flcalliance.org. FLCA. FLCA. Okay, and um, both of those websites have some really good resources for parents, but they also have people that, that will talk to you and help you through some of this stuff. I, I wish I had a better answer to what can someone who's expecting do. Uh, there, there really isn't a good answer. Even in legal states, there really isn't. 
I would also call the hospital ahead and ask about their policy so you can put them on on alert but not say your name and say I'm an activist uh, for cannabis reform I plan on selecting your hospital for my child's birth uh, in full uh, um, what's it called what? yes in full disclosure thank you in full disclosure, I want to know your exact policy. Can I speak to your legal department? Because that way they know that if they cause complications for you, you know, a lot of times they are a corporation. Most hospitals are there for money and um, they don't want the bad press. So they know you're carrying press and you're carrying a community with you. I found a lot of times, sometimes they'll smack the, the nest of someone who they feel won't challenge them. But the more you're loud about it or the more you make them answer to what your questions are specifically very specifically they'll understand that you're empowered and probably well represented and they're less likely at least in my experience to do that um, a lot of you may be familiar maybe you're not but with an actress named Kara Burnham and she's in close proximity to FLCA's founder Sarah and um, she she notified the hospital beforehand she said my name you know is Kara Kara Burnham you have my information I'm in network my gynecologist is you know associated with the hospital and I'm gonna be giving birth there I have been using cannabis medicinally during my pregnancy for some of the symptoms I have but I'm just a consumer and I just want you to know that I need to know what your policies are uh, so I can plan and, and, and add it to my birth plan and she didn't have problems because of that yeah this First of all, thank you for pioneering this. You're amazing, and thank you so much for choosing to not hide your use and for giving people that aren't ready to do that a voice. Um, I would echo everything that both of them said about being as proactive as, as possible, educating yourself. I mean, I think it's really about um, educating, like she said, the hospital's policy, knowing that, knowing, I believe it's the social worker that's at the hospital that, will, that actually is... So you know, so that's super important if you already know that person, if you have the resources to have a lawyer or being networked with one of these organizations she mentioned where they might give you a little bit of pro bono advice or something like that. And um, really just knowing exactly what your rights are. If you know all of that in and out, it will make, and I mean, maybe even, you know, like people have a birthing plan, maybe you want <laughs> a plan for that. So you have that all right there, scripted out, ready to go in case this is something you bump into. And she's exactly right about like, if you have, you know, this, these other organizations that are already advocating for the same thing if they know your story they know your situation they're gonna be much more likely to come at bat for you you know as it comes so bless you and good luck I wish there was a golden answer to this but there's just not yet and get that policy in writing I yes, worked at six absolutely. hospitals in five states and the only one that had a written policy was the one that I wrote so it is very likely that they don't have a written policy Thank you. Huge round of applause for our panel today.